Have you ever wondered what it truly meant to be voiceless, yet whispering into the ears of emperors? Some men surrendered their manhood in a grisly exchange for just such influence. Yes, you heard right. We're talking about Chinese eunuchs. These men traded their most private parts to serve in China's opulent imperial palaces, privy to all scandalous secrets that thrived within these majestic walls. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today, we delve into the labyrinth of scandals and intrigues that ensnared the eunuchs, explore how they managed to partake in intimate activities, and unravel the chilling procedure that was performed on them. Duties and Dominion Eunuchs in ancient China were far more than mere keepers of the couch. These bobtailed dogs, as they were endearingly called, were the beating heart of the imperial palace, running its day-to-day -day affairs, tending to the emperor's every whim, whispering secrets in the corridors, and masterminding scandals. You might picture these men as docile, timid servants, but don't be fooled. Their responsibilities and roles were as diverse and complex as the Forbidden City itself. From cooking lavish meals, doing the laundry, and tending to the imperial gardens, to keeping meticulous records, they did it all. Some even soared to the heights of becoming the emperor's favorite, commanding thousands of eunuchs below them, in a complex hierarchy with 48 distinct grades. Now, how did they earn this trust? Their gruesome initiation into eunuchhood rendered them devoid of the usual masculine desires, making them safe for service within the intimate quarters of the palace. They were the proverbial bed watchers, the only men other than the emperor allowed to enter the sacred confines of the harem. And this privilege came with power. However, don't romanticize their life too much. A slight mistake in front of the emperor could mean a brutal beating or worse, death. They were not even allowed to be buried with their families. This then was the paradoxical life of a eunuch, privileged, powerful, but perpetually apart. But Indeed, some eunuchs rose to great heights. They were explorers like Zhang He, inventors like Tsai Lun, who is credited with inventing paper, and even musicians who brought Western classical music to China. Understanding the significance of eunuchs and their political influence requires acknowledging their unique position within the imperial structure. The eunuchs were the emperor's most intimate attendants, having access to him daily. This constant interaction with the emperor, along with their close ties to the palace women and young princes, placed them in an influential spot within the imperial household, making them potent intermediaries between the emperor and his outer bureaucratic world. One of the most dramatic examples of a eunuch's political clout is seen during the Ming Dynasty under Emperor Wan He, with over 10,000 eunuchs serving in the imperial court and between 70,000 to 100,000 holding official positions across the country eunuchs permeated every level of governance. Their proximity to the emperor allowed them to manipulate information flow, color the ruler's perception of external affairs, and even counteract any ministers who opposed their influence. The significant role of eunuchs was not solely restricted to politics, but extended into culture as well. Court eunuchs during the Ming Dynasty made remarkable contributions to Chinese civilization, becoming the first Chinese to play Western classical music. Despite being initially forbidden to acquire education, the rising need to counteract the power of the gentry and strengthen the emperor's personal authority necessitated educated eunuchs. Thus, whole departments of learned eunuchs existed in court, carrying out the emperor's confidential business. A particularly infamous eunuch, Liu Jin, demonstrated the potential extent of a eunuch's power. Liu Jin, under Emperor Wu Zong, managed to gain enough power to issue all commands himself, with the emperor blissfully preoccupied with pleasures. Liu Jin's reign witnessed the punishment and removal of over 300 prominent persons, only to be replaced with his supporters. However, the story of eunuchs is not just about power and influence, but also about corruption and downfall. The eunuch's notorious reputation for being mercenary and unscrupulous originated from their indulgence in bribery, embezzlement, and manipulation of the emperor's decisions for personal gains. When the power of the emperor waned, the vacuum would be filled by the eunuchs and corrupt officials, signaling a dynasty in decline. While eunuchs are often remembered for their roles as political manipulators, it's essential to acknowledge their contributions in other spheres, such as exploration and culture. 
For instance, Zhang He, a remarkable Chinese navigator, embarked on expeditions that rivaled the feats of Columbus and Magellan. A eunuch and a devout Muslim, he sailed as far as Africa and explored regions like India, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and Arabia. Scandals and Intrigues Eunuchs were often the center of scandalous activities, from participating in plots and rebellions to orchestrating assassinations. Eunuchs were also utilized as a political tool. During the Qing Dynasty, a policy of castrating the sons of rebels and murderers was introduced, which resulted in an influx of eunuchs for palace service. An infamous example is the aftermath of the Lin Shuang Wen Rebellion, where more than a hundred sons of the rebels, ranging in age from 4 to 15, were castrated on the emperor's orders. The more salacious aspects of eunuch life are often the subject of historical fascination. For instance, though they were castrated, eunuchs in some cases maintained an active sexual life, albeit mainly for the pleasures of others. During the Qing dynasty, eunuchs could engage in intimate activities with women in the palace, including the imperial harem. Their sexual encounters ranged from foreplay and the use of toys to performing oral exchanges. It's noteworthy that while these eunuchs had lost their reproductive ability, they still possessed sexual desires, resulting in a complex sexual culture within the palace. Interestingly, eunuchs had a longer life expectancy than their non-castrated counterparts. A study of eunuchs from Korea's royal court during the Chosun dynasty found that eunuchs lived on average 14 to 19 years longer than non-castrated men of similar socioeconomic status. Some eunuchs even reached the age of 100, a rarity at the time. While some of this longevity can be attributed to the privileged lifestyle within the palace, the elimination of testosterone and its potential negative impacts on health might have also played a role. The eunuch operation. Brace yourself, because things are about to get gory. Imagine being a young man barely old enough to comprehend the world and being thrust into a bloody operation that would change your life forever. All for the lure of power, prestige, and pulling your family out of the clutches of poverty. In ancient China, many families saw their son's castration as a ticket to a better life. It wasn't just a random decision, but a calculated gamble, as young men were robbed of their manhood to become imperial eunuchs. The process was horrifyingly simple and barbaric. The young men were castrated with a swift slash of a knife in a modest hut outside the Forbidden City for a mere fee of six silver pieces. It was a package deal, if you will. The p and the or the three preciouses, as they were referred to, were all taken, leaving nothing behind. Oh, and for anesthetics, just some hot chili sauce, which as you might imagine, wasn't exactly soothing. A plug was then shoved into the gaping wound for three gruesome days. If urine flowed out once the plug was removed, Congratulations, you're now a eunuch and had a chance to live. And if it didn't, well, let's just say the outcome was often a torturous demise. This brutal tradition was so ingrained that there was a specific clinic within the Forbidden City during the Ming Dynasty. Here, future eunuchs sat on a special chair with a hole, ready to have their lives irrevocably altered. The less fortunate ones who didn't survive were carried away with their severed genitals in a pouch reserved for a reunion in the afterlife. The effects were immediate and lifelong. The loss of male hormones led to high-pitched voices, softer demeanors, no beard, and unfortunately, less bladder control. Hence the old Chinese saying, as smelly as a eunuch. But remember, these eunuchs carried a badge of their sacrifice. Their preserved genitals in a jar, proudly displayed on their belts. This would be buried with them after death. That way, they could rest in peace as a full man ready for reincarnation. The irony of it all? They were too weak for hard labor, but strong enough to survive the horrific operation and serve emperors. So the next time you think you've had a rough day, just remember these poor souls. Communist Revolution In the aftermath of the fall of the Qing Dynasty, the collapse of an empire that had stood for centuries, sent shockwaves throughout the nation affecting all aspects of life, not least of all, the eunuchs. When the revolution in 1911 marked the end of the dynasty, the last emperor, Pu Yi, continued to live in the Forbidden City along with his eunuchs. They were financially supported by the newly formed Chinese Republic until 1924, 
However, after a suspicious fire that Pu Yi believed was an attempt to cover up the theft of his imperial treasures, he banished the eunuchs from the Forbidden City. The eunuchs, who had once held enviable power and privilege in the imperial court, found themselves displaced in a rapidly changing society. The last imperial eunuch, Sun Yao Ting, provides a poignant illustration of this transition. Sun was emasculated just months before the end of the Qing Dynasty and lived to the ripe old age of 93. He died in 1996, marking the end of a unique and often misunderstood facet of Chinese culture. Sun had been inspired to become a eunuch by another in his village, who had grown rich. However, he faced harsh realities when the once revered role he aspired to was reduced to a mockery. After the communists came to power, Sun was ridiculed as a relic of a bygone era and lived in constant fear during the Cultural Revolution. His preserved genitals, or bao, a symbol of his eunuch identity, were discarded by his own family who were terrified of persecution. Despite the tribulations he faced, Sun Yao Ting found work as a temple caretaker, adopted a son, and lived to share his unique perspective on the last years of imperial China. His experiences, captured in a biography published in the late 2000s, offered invaluable insights into a time long past. A civilization transformed, and a life lived on the cusp of monumental change. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.